Today I'm going to talk about exceptions using Java. An exception is an event that interrupts the normal flow of a program. These exceptions pop up if you do things like divide by zero, you can't find a resource for some reason, or if there's a mismatch with the input type. Let's say the program asks for a number and you type in a string of characters. These sorts of events interrupt your program. They're called exceptions. There's a way that we can handle them, and that is by using a few blocks of code. Try, catch, and optionally, finally. So any code that's considered dangerous, where it might interrupt your program, you can surround with the try block. Here's an example. So let's say I'm going to take the number one and divide it by zero. Mathematically speaking, you can't divide by zero. That causes an exception. More specifically, an arithmetic exception. I'm actually just gonna copy this and save it. This code is dangerous. It's interrupting our program by causing an exception. We can gracefully handle this exception so that it doesn't interrupt the normal flow of our program. Any dangerous code, we're going to surround with a try block, try and a set of curly braces. There we go. However, if we have a try block, we also need a catch block. We will catch any exceptions, but we're going to list the specific kind of exception we're going to catch. Well, let's catch that one exception, that arithmetic exception. This is the type. We're setting up a parameter here. Arithmetic exception is the type. We will give this exception a name of E for a nickname. If we encounter this exception, we can take a different course of action instead of interrupting the program. So let's do the following. Let's output, you can't divide by zero, idiot. So if we run this again, it shouldn't interrupt our program. We catch this exception and I'll put this text instead. So any code that's dangerous, where it might cause an exception, you can surround with the try block. You can add more than one catch block to catch and handle specific exceptions. So this time we're going to accept some user input. We'll need a scanner. For now, I'm going to write the scanner outside of the try block. Near the end of this video, there's a feature called use with resources. I'll show you how to do that later. Scanner scanner equals new scanner. Type system.in and then import this class. Import java.util.scanner. Anytime you accept user input, it's almost always dangerous code because a user can type in anything. This time, let's prompt a user to enter a number. And I will use print. Let's create a local variable of int number equals use our scanner called the next int method to accept an integer. And then we'll just output our number. Enter a number. Uh, how about no, I'm going to type in the word pizza instead. Well, we get an exception, an input mismatch exception. Java was expecting an integer, but we typed in a string instead. We can handle these exceptions too. And I'm just going to copy the name of this exception because we'll reuse it. Let's catch the following. Let's catch any input mismatch exceptions. This is the type we will give this exception a nickname of E. So this exception we actually do have to import. Import java.util.inputMismatchException. In case there's a mismatch with the data type, we're asking the user for a number, but they type in a string. Let's output the following. Let's say that wasn't a number. Let's try it again. Enter a number. Uh, I'll type in the word, I already did pizza, let's do taco. That wasn't a number, and our program finished with no problems. You can catch and handle more than one exception. There is a catch-all statement that you could add. You could catch all exceptions, exception E. Using this by itself isn't good practice. You want to let a user know exactly what went wrong. If all else fails, and there's an exception that you don't anticipate, you could just say, something went wrong. 
you could technically use this by itself. Enter a number. For example, I'll type in hot dog. Something went wrong. This does prevent our program from being interrupted. It is good practice to let the user know what went wrong exactly. I'm looking at you, Microsoft. Catching all exceptions acts as some sort of safety net. You should only do it at the end, in case there's something you don't anticipate. It is better to catch and handle specific types of exceptions, because you can let the user know what went wrong exactly. Now, there's also the finally block. This is optional. Finally will always execute, whether there's an exception or not. This is where you might clean up any resources. For example, with my scanner, I forgot to close it. We can actually close it within the finally block. When we're done with our scanner, let's close it. Because if we encounter an exception, we might not close the scanner. Other times finally might be useful is if you open a file within a try block, then you'll want to close the file when you're done with it. You can do that within the finally block. For testing purposes, I'm just going to add this always executes. All right, let's do a test run. Enter a number. I'll type in 123, and then we output 123. See that finally block does execute. This always executes. If we encounter an exception, enter a number. I will type in taco. We get our exception message for input mismatch. And then that finally block does execute. Finally is quite often used for cleanup, cleaning up your program when you're done with it. When you open a file or resource, you want to close it. We'll have more practice with this on the next topic of file handling. Now, there's also try with resources. And actually, Java is recommending this. Rather than declaring our scanner outside of the try block, we can place within a set of parentheses. And then Java is automatically going to close those resources when it's done opening them. So this works too. So enter a number, 123. Enter a number, pizza. That wasn't a number. All right, everybody, so those are exceptions. They're events that interrupt the normal flow of a program. Exceptions occur when you divide by zero, you can't locate a resource, or there's a mismatch of the input type that a user types in. You'll want to surround any dangerous code with a try block. Anytime you accept user input or try and locate an external resource, that's almost always dangerous code. Try any dangerous code catch any exceptions, and optionally, you can add finally to do any resource cleanup. And well, everybody, those are exceptions in Java.